When we think about professional golf, we tend to think of the masters of the game, especially those who have also won the masters. You know, the big guys with their big names and big bucks. We tend to focus on the lush green grass, but as you must have suspected, the grass is not always green in professional golf. So join us for a midnight round as we look at the darker sides of professional golf. Going pro. The journey to golf stardom can be painful, especially if you come from a place where money is scarce. Although many nonprofits and golf organizations are working to diversify the game, golf parents still have to invest a fortune in their children's careers. The exorbitant green fees and payments for equipment, traveling, and professional coaching leave huge divots in their wallets. And for those who can't afford these costs, their kids have to make do with subpar facilities. Added to that, many of these boys and girls have to learn their way around the course on their own. But who knows, there might be a Seve Ballesteros in there. However, whether rich or poor, whiz kid or late bloomer, every golfer nursing pro ambitions has to put in insane hours of practice and competition. They have to sacrifice important things like their time and a chance to learn a real sport like cheese rolling. And after years of validating their talent through toiling and competition, most amateur golfers are convinced they have what it takes to achieve their dreams on professional circuits. So they turn pro. And of course, the holy grail is the PGA and LPGA tours. After all, they are the homes of golf's money and glory. These days, you can throw live golf in there on the money side too. The money and glory. This is where golf gets interesting and brutal. You can afford to play under zero pressure if you're just knocking the ball around with your pals. But when you need to make putts to get your next meal, golf is a totally different ball game. Pro golfers make money from three main sources, tournaments, sponsorships, and side businesses. However, how much they earn depends on multiple factors. Financial success in tournaments, for example, is reserved for the big boys. In 2023, Victor Hovland led the PGA Tour money list with $37.1 million. He made $14.1 million from tournaments, $18 million from winning the FedEx Cup, and $5 million from the PGA Tour's Player Impact Program. Other top players, including Rory McIlroy, Scotty Scheffler, John Rahm, and Xander Shoffley, also pulled in eight figures from the PGA Tour's total pot of $560 million. Elsewhere, on the Saudi-backed Live Golf, golfers also made similar figures for their on-course performances. But as good as this looks and sounds, this is not the reality of every professional golfer. Some players on the PGA Tour didn't even earn a decent four-figure income in the same year. This is usually the fate of less skilled players who fail to make the cuts in the tournaments they play. Also, this is where golf gets quite grim. In professional stroke play events, failure to qualify for the last two rounds is financially consequential. When players miss the cut, they get zero dollars for their troubles in the first two rounds. Only major tournaments pay stipends to golfers who fall off before the weekend. But away from the blinding lights of the big leagues, pro golf gets even grimmer when you go further south. For pros who can't make it to the premier tours or lose their tour cards and exempt status, they have to play their way through developmental tours and mini tours. It's the only way they can make it to the main events. And money-wise, these leagues are far cries from the prestigious tours. Take the PGA Tour's main developmental league, the Corn Ferry Tour, for example. In 2023, the Corn Ferry Tour distributed a tour-high $28 million among its members over 26 tournaments. That was a speck of what the PGA Tour paid its top earners in the same year. But you know what? Every player who got a piece of that purse would appreciate every penny they made. Why? Because they know so many others who got nothing. Things are even more dire on the women's side. The LPGA Tour is the world's biggest women's golf league, but it only had $101.4 million to spread among its members over 33 events. Lilia Vu topped the money list with only $3.5 million, but the truth is LPGA members don't want to be on the LPGA's equivalent of the Corn Ferry, the Epson Tour. In 2023, players on the Epson Tour shared a meager $4.9 million over 22 tournaments, which was also a record figure for the tour. Still, players on any of these tours have better odds of making money than their counterparts on mini tours where they have to literally bet on themselves. We'll get into that later in the video. For now, let's look at sponsorships. Some promising golfers get brand endorsements as early as high school, 
and they could be the difference between making it and giving up for many of these kids. It could help offset the financial challenges that often plague amateur golfers, and thanks to it, they can focus on just playing golf. As for those who make it to the PGA Tour, sponsors shower them with gifts. They get perks like free products and multi-million dollar contracts for advertising big businesses. Rory McIlroy, for example, enjoys one of the most lucrative sponsorships in sports. He has deals with Nike, Omega, and TaylorMade worth over $300 million. But he's an exception that all his peers envy. The golf pros struggling in the lower leagues will do anything for that kind of money. At the bottom of the professional pool, golfers play for sponsorships as little as equipment discounts from TaylorMade if they're lucky. Instead of brands coming to them, many of these players are the ones who humbly seek out sponsors. Some of them even sell shares of themselves and play just to repay their investors. Stick around to know just how rough the road gets for these golf pros. To make money from side hustles, popular players sell their names and faces, but anonymous golfers don't have that luxury. Instead, most of them are forced to sell their expertise and experience. Rory McIlroy's many investments include his Tomorrow Sports venture with Tiger Woods. And while that is not bringing in money yet, his management company, Rory McIlroy Management Services Limited, raked in about $38 million in 2023 alone. And that's just one of his many streams of income. On the other end of that reality are golf pros who have had to support themselves financially by thinking outside the box. As a pro, Rick Shields struggled to make it as a player. He discovered early in his career that he couldn't throw his hat in the ring against the monsters at the top. So rather than chase a pipe dream on golf tours, he chose a different path. He decided to sell his knowledge, and luckily for him, he became golf's most popular instructor. His YouTube channel now has more than 2.7 million subscribers with almost 800 million views. But the story is not the same for everyone who has gone in that direction. While Shields can afford a comfortable life without worrying about tournament golf, many pros still have to put in shifts to stay afloat. Pro golf is a bumpy cart ride. For thousands of golf pros all over the world, every putt they miss could mean bankruptcy. Pro golf is so expensive that most of these guys literally live on the road. Because they can't afford hotel rooms, they have to sleep in their cars and take long car rides from state to state. It's the only way they can save money for a chance to play and win some cash prizes. When players can't make it into the Corn Ferry Tour or the Epson Tour, they settle for the crumbs they can find on mini tours like the Minor Golf League Tour, the IGT Challenge Tour, and the Alps Tour. On these tours, entry fees can be as high as $1,000, and purses can be as small as $50,000 for the entire field. So in between playing for scraps on mini tours, golfers at this level chase down sponsors' exemptions to play in more profitable events. They are also the guys who try ceaselessly to pass qualifying school. These players have zero outside support, but they have to pay for their green, travel, accommodation, coaching, caddy, and equipment fees like everyone at their level. And this is where golf gets truly lonely. So don't be surprised if your Uber driver, your pizza delivery guy, your favorite bar's bouncer, or maybe even the voiceover guy of your favorite YouTube channel is also a golf pro. It's crazy out there. When these golfers get lucky, they get invited to pro-ams where they are sometimes handsomely rewarded. But at the bottom of the pile, golf is grueling and life can be nasty. Players would sometimes go through all this trouble to conclude they are not made for the stars after all. Some will retire and unretire several times to test their childhood dreams before they decide it was all an illusion. But wherever they play and whatever prizes they play for, golf pros ultimately play for the same reason. They have a passion they can't ignore. And for some of them, it might mean a life of barely getting by. Unless they get that live golf check, of course. If you enjoyed this video about the harsh business of golf, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. Let us know in the comments if there's another golf story you'd like us to cover. See you there.